Now, today is the 100th anniversary of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. It was a horrible tragedy in which 146 workers perished in New York because fire escapes fell apart, doors were locked, so there was only one exit, there was no sprinkler system. It was a different time. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt's labor secretary called it the day the New Deal began. So 100 years later, looking back at this day as a catalyst for the labor movement, what's changed? What's stayed the same? And what's happened to unions in America? Well, here to discuss with me is Zed Jelani, reporter and blogger for ThinkProgress.org and the Progress Report at the Center for American Progress, as well as Seton Motley, president of Less Government. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for joining me tonight. Now, Seton, I'm going to start with you because I know that you uh, aren't a fan of unions, obviously. But if we look back at this Public day, sector, yes. if we look back at this day in history, though, uh, look at this tragic event, uh, you know, can you deny the importance of unions when it comes to workers' rights, when it comes to safety in the workplace? Yes, in 1908. They've long since outlet their usefulness, as demonstrated by the current private sector union uh, membership is under 8% at 7.9%. They've served their purpose. In the, in the evolution, and they may not have ever been necessary because in the evolution of a capitalist system, you start out with the robber barons because only a certain number of people have money and they make the working conditions untenable. But what that is is an opportunity for other employers to come in and say, okay, you don't have to work 80 hours a week, you can work 60. And then some other employer can come out and say, you can work 50. It becomes a competition for the workers rather than a competition for the jobs. And that's the evolution of every free market system throughout history, and the unions perhaps accelerated worker safety, and there's, there's no denying that probably, but in the grand scheme of things, over the arching growth of, a, of a, for every free market system, th those things happen on their own without the without assistance of unions. How can you possibly say that? We all know that if it's if in business does what's in their best interest, it's never what's in the best interest of the worker. Sure and you can see these all, guys that's, that's by the fact that, that the, all that our businesses go, well, go overseas, well, well, right? They go to where they can exploit other workers. I think, I think the best that's thing to do, I think government. the best the best thing to do is to start talking about some facts here, okay? If you're going to say that unions have outlived uh, their usefulness, what you're saying is the American middle class has outlived its usefulness. The, the one single point in America where the middle class had the greatest share of income was the 1950s. In the 1950s, we had three times as many workers in labor unions as we do now. As labor unions have declined, so has the American middle class. That's totally yeah. untrue. No, that's completely that's true. You can fundamentally look untrue. What is sure. untrue about that? Absolutely, the, the middle, middle class, class in America is, is shrinking. More people. No, Please, it's, no, show no me that, one that is a You can't come on here and give us fake stats. I, I can give you real stats. More people under Reagan moved from the bottom fifth percentile to the highest fifth percentile than stayed in the bottom fifth percentile. The middle class has been growing for decades. What's been squeezing them out is higher taxes, more government. Well, this is absolutely false. Taxes absolutely are much lower than they were in the 1950s. Unions are much lower than they were in the 1950s. And I, I love Ronald Reagan. I think Ronald Reagan's a great guy. Ronald Reagan said that collective bargaining is a human right. And he supported the Solidarity Union in Poland, which actually supports the protests in Wisconsin. So I love Ronald Reagan. I'm glad. Thank you very much for bringing him into the debate, man. But also, the middle also, class is shrinking. The wealth no, gap in the United that's States false, is the largest that statement. it's ever been. That is a false statement. In the 1970s, when, when we had a lot more unions now, the average CEO earned about 30 times as much as the average worker. Today, it's about 300 times. I mean, that, that speaks for itself. Grown. That speaks for itself. The economy is growing, and it's not going to the right people. It's not going to the great American says, middle class. It's not you. going to the working who, class. Who appointed you the godfather of all <laughs> economic uh, uh, data? Hey, and there's and, absolutely and no need to be rude, but I, uh, I've seen those facts as well, Zed. Now, let's talk about, right? 100 years ago, and let's look at the labor movement today. We've all said that union membership has dropped significantly, but the American our, worker doesn't we're, want we're it anymore. We're seeing a huge war on unions too. The public sector unions, which shouldn't exist anyway. In Wisconsin, in Wisconsin, but you can't say that there isn't this intimidation campaign. From the story that I did earlier in the show, when we found out that from Indiana, they were suggesting to Scott Walker that he fake an assassination attempt. We know that Scott Walker is now going after a professor who works in Wisconsin and trying to open his emails just because. He wrote an op ed supporting labor unions That's in Wisconsin. Not why he's this doing is an that. intimidation he's campaign. He's doing that because the guy was writing fake sick notes to people who were striking and not calling it a strike. That's why he's going after And how many other doctors in the state did that? Well, they should go after all of them. Do you think, though, that this is clearly, clearly an intimidation campaign, a war on unions? Well, I mean, I think Walker's scared. I mean, polling shows that two to one Wisconsinites oppose what he's doing, and that's why he didn't campaign on it. That's why he campaigned without campaign talking about it. That PolitiFact says that's false. And I think PolitiFact's that Walker, I think that Walker is starting to get really scared here, and that's why he's trying to do these things. And I think he's really, really scared that come January, when he's eligible for a recall, he'll lose that recall election. By a year 
year from now, the economy would be much better in Wisconsin because they've done what they've done, and no one will be trying to recall Scott Walker. But don't you find it frustrating? For example, I was just speaking to a gentleman from U.S. Uncut. Uh, I find it ultimately so frustrating to learn that a corporation like GE, which is the largest in America, paid no income tax and in fact collected billions of our taxpayer money, and yet public sector union workers are the ones that are being victimized here and said, uh, you know, being painted as if their pension plans are just so fat that they are spoiled. GE, C GE leaders, Jeffrey Immelt, is an Obama crony. I call them the foos, the friends of Obama. And, and he gets all kinds of breaks. He's on the job board that Obama put together, which has created no jobs, and but that's not like they weren't getting tax breaks before Obama well, came no, around. Well, no, like Google pays a, a, an effective tax rate of four percent. You know, I think Satan's onto something here. No, he's right. Obama shouldn't have appointed this man to the to the so-called jobs council, the competitive council, because the way that they're being competitive is by dodging their taxes. I pay my taxes. Satan's a great guy. I'm sure he pays his taxes. Why isn't General Electric paying their taxes? Why isn't Google paying their taxes? Why is Exxon Mobil and Citigroup not paying their taxes? And, I'm, I'm right. just as angry as Satan is about this, and I think we need to hold these people's feet to our fire and get our government to make these people pay before they, they start coming after and teachers and fire And government chooses workers. not to focus and, 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 on, right? And Ron Wyden's a great example of this. Right. The Democrat senator from uh, Oregon, he's calling for fundamental corporate tax reform. He's exactly right. More p Republicans are on the He's the only Democrat. There are Republicans that are a lot of Republicans that are on that side. We need to fundamentally stop the carve outs for this group and that group. Every corporation pays a different percentage. Equal protection for the law, straighten it out, make it simpler, and make everyone pay the same rate. Okay, lastly, uh, Obama, is he going to get the vote from public sector unions in 2012, even though he hasn't really said anything or helped them out at all here? Well, um, they're sort of uh, between a rock and a hard place right now. And what I have to tell Obama is this. I mean, when he was running for president, he said he put on a, a nice pair of shoes and walked the picket line with people. Yes, he did say and it may that. Get, and it may get to that point. I hope that he remembers his own words there. I think he's forgotten. Otherwise, he would have already been out on the streets. What's important is not the votes, because about half of the union membership vote for Republicans. What's important to Obama and the Democrats is they get the union money, which is almost 100% spent on Democrats, half of which is used against the, the candidates that the Republican membership votes for. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and a lively conversation, of course, out of remembering a tragedy 100 years ago.